So welcome, I'm Julie, and I'm going to show you in this video how to use stencils, inks, we need a colored pencil, and stamps on shrink plastic. Um, so the minor things is I'm just gonna use a colored pencils and a little bit of pastels uh, for little added elements in this, but the main thing is gonna be stencils, stamps, and inks. So let's get started, and I have a variety of pre-cuts here. Sanded and shiny, some of the gold. Um, here's one that I already did. Um, a little bit of ivory. Um, and we're going to get started. So we're gonna start out simple, and I'm gonna use a lot of scrap paper here. Um, and the first ones I'm gonna demo, these are little lovely sets I sell on my site, and they're the Hero Arts and the Ombre. So you get a nice um, range of lots of colors with these. So these will be fun to use. And then I'm going to go into some of the Versa Marks and the Archival Inks. So this is a brand by Hero Arts. Versa Inks are from Sukuniko. And then the Archival Inks are um, Ranger. So those are the brands that I really like. You want to use a high quality ink. And you definitely want to use an ink that says it's permanent, not a dye ink. If you do use a dye ink, you will probably have to seal it before you shrink it down with a spray fix. So I just recommend going with the uh, correct ink to start with. And most of these inks are made for papers. They're not made for uh, porous, uh, non-porous surfaces such as shrink plastic. There's a brand called Stazon that is made just for non-porous surfaces, um, but I have found that I can use um, the regular uh, permanent inks that are made for papers on shrink plastic if I blot, and I'm going to go through that with you. I'll try to get a page here. It doesn't have a lot of um, background busyness on it. And so I tend to keep things rather simple, um, especially in, you can get more ornate on larger pieces, but these, these you know, have a specific purpose. Um, there's not a lot of applications except large pendants that you can use larger shrink plastic, where these are just a really nice size for stringing, pendants, um, and earrings. So this is a really, you know, this is my standard size. So these are the sanded and shiny. Shiny on one side, sanded on the other. And I'm um, going to open the green. And then I'm going to talk about the sponges that you use. This is by Ranger. And they have these little sponges that you can peel off and peel on and you can keep your little sponges in a in a collection of colors and then usually what I do until they just wear out and break down is that I wash them in a dish soap and sudsy warm water and then let them dry and they're permanently stained but they don't have any color they don't transfer color anymore or I also keep things in the color range so that's there, wiping it off. So it goes on down from olive to really bright green. So it says. And let me give myself some new spots. So here, here is that sponger, and this is how I sell them on my site. The the sponge comes with two and four daubers, and then it also in, you, it, on my site you can buy a, the little mini sponges to go with it. So I'm gonna open a package of these. So for the demo, I have um, clean sponges. 
And then little daubers. These are finger daubers. You can usually get this in the craft store or online. They're ink called ink daubers or ink sponges, finger sponges. So here we go. And I'm going to center This is green. I'm going to use these little leafy things. I'm going to center it with the bead. And I'm, I hit the bright green on the outside. And when I dip it in, I'm keeping it right here on this edge so that I can go in on the other side. with the darker olive green. Whoa, it shifted on me, ouch. Oh, not too bad. And there I got, let's come in here and make sure that that really shows off. And there I've got a nice um, gradation on that. So what I'm gonna do is that was a new stamp, so it's really juicy and wet and I wanna make sure that I take a lot of that off. See, this is crucial, especially with a new ink pad when it's really wet and you wanna make sure it's dry. So then I will come in here with um, little edge dots. And this I did definitely on the frosted side. So coming around, and I want this to totally dry. Carefully put it back. I'm going to peel this off and you know save it for the green, and then I'm going to come in here with my ombre, and I'm going to get in this mid range right here. And I already have a, a, a sponge that's in blue. And I'm going to hit that check there. And I'm coming around. And just edging that. There. And that ought to be a really pretty little... Um, Piece. We want to make sure we soak up. As you can see, there was these are new stamps, so they're really juicy. I really like to use um, um, inks. They're really juicy. I really like to use ink pads that are kind of a little bit dried out because then I can get a really soft halo look. So um, let's come in here. And next we're going to do, try to get some cleaner paper for us. I tend to recycle my paper a lot so it gets used and used and used till it can't be used anymore. And let's pick this stencil. And we're gonna come in here this is a dauber that already has, can you see the wear on that? But it already has the purple, so I'm gonna come out here on my purple edge. I'm gonna soak some of that up so I can buff a little bit and have it come down on my piece a little drier. And then my color ranges go down to blue and green. So, um, I'm going to explore that, that blue. Just take some off. That was pretty strong. And then for my green on that, 
I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to bring that under here. And clean it up. And so let's continue on that. And this time we're going to bring in our oranges. And I've already got a pad in those in that range. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure that I buffed a lot off, and I'm just gonna do a when I say buff it off, take some of the moisture out of it. I'm just gonna do a grade aided look here. So I'm checking to see what my next color is. I'm gonna go um, into this orange. See how strong that is. Take some of it off and halo in here. There, lovely. And then I think on this I'm going to do two fun things. I'm coming out here and I'm going to introduce the pink. Since my ombres don't have any pink, I'm going to introduce um, the pickled raspberry is a, a, a transparent. I just know this from using it. And the Versa Ink Pink is opaque. So I'm going to come in with the opaque pink. And I am looking for a pink dauber sponge and I'm just gonna put this out here on the edge just let it be a fun pattern that kind of gently gradates in see just very subtle and then I'm going to come in with a rubber stamp I'll, it'll either use this one or this one and come in with a rubber stamp in black I think I'm looking for my black I don't see it so I'm going to make another choice I'm going to come in with these are um, by Versamark, Sukaniko still, and these are chalks, so that means they're going to be very, very opaque. And um, so that means that it'll overlay over that transparent that I buffed on there and be quite interesting. So the chalk, the chalk um, these come in little sets, and this is a nice little blue. And I'm putting it on here. It's pretty juicy, so I want to make sure I get some of that off because it'd just be too much ink on the on the um, trinkets. Coming down here, and there, and burnishing. Because these are, do you see how the residue needs to come off? I'll move it over to another spot. Extra ink needs to come off of that. So there I am with that little piece. And I've got some on my, I'm using a little bit of alcohol. And it's just rubbing alcohol and wiping my stamp down. Or baby wipes, you can use whatever to clean and get it off your fingers too. Because this is this can be a messy creative process. Okay. So we've got three fun ones going on. Now let's go to the gold. And see what fun things we can do with the gold. 
And I think what I'd like to do is use the chalks on the gold. So I'm going to pick out a, a stencil I like. And I'm going to look at my chalk ink colors. These are the sets that I that I bought. These come in little sets. I bought two of them. And I think that would be really pretty. Remember that these are um, opaques. So we are going to come in here. And I'm just hitting the outside shapes. And I can peek and see how that looks. Very sweet. Okay, I'm going to hold that. And I'm looking at that and going, what other color would look good with it? That's a gorgeous color. It's come in with a dauber that doesn't have color on it. That one has color on it. Here's one that's nice and fresh, or I can clean off this one. And I want to make sure I burnish quite a bit of that off. Pretty, very pretty. So um, I think that in addition of this kind of green might look really good on this. I was a little off center. So you wanna be careful that you're on center when you do this. And I'm just gonna come around here with little fun lines in this um, kind of dusty green. And then this is, this is, this is a nice indigo color. I thought it was black, but it's an indigo color. So that's kind of fun in there too. And then I most definitely need to burnish that off. And there we go. So let's keep our covers on things. And those are supposed to stack together, but geez, who's that organized? Mine just go in a bag to keep them moist. Keep my, get my fingers clean. Try to find the scrap paper. That works. And so let's see if we've done an ivory yet. We haven't done an ivory. And this is my opulence. So it's got some glisten on it, a gold glitter on it. And I'm going to come in here with one of my favorites. I love over the overall patterns. Uh, the stencils, my favorite things are the overall patterns versus floral or Mandela patterns. I just really like these it's just somehow it just works more with my aesthetic so we're gonna we have that glistening ivory we've got that ivory and i think i'm going to play with these colors in my ombre collection put a clean pad on there and go in with the purple Oh, I guess that's more the blue. I guess I was hitting the blue. Thought it was hitting the purple. There I go. Just missed it. Oh. Well, let's see what we have. Oh, well, that's nice. We'll just show you what we're going to do. To get our purple look. Let's see. I'm going to go in with a small, the daubers are, it gives me a little more control than the ranger piece. Let's see. That is purple. Yeah, it, it is. 
Okay. So what we're going to do is just come up here with another design. And play like that with it. So that'll be pretty. And I might just add these little tips to this. So there we are. Now what can be done with black? And I'm going to show you. It's fun with black. Number one, the chalks. Chalks are nice on black. And so I want this one to be whimsical. And I'm looking for, oh, there's something nice. Get it centered on there. So come in. It's nice to have a lot of daubers, little sponges to change out because when you're all done, you can wash them and they're ready to go again with any other color. See how that color is. Oh, now that's fun. That is really, really fun. And then I'm coming in here with colored pencil. Whoops. Well, I guess my design changed a little bit, so I'm making sure that um, that works with it. And that should just be fun. At least I think so. So, let's continue. And we are going to pick another stencil color, another color, and another stencil. Let's see. This is another favorite, and I'm going to do it on the white shrink plastic. Line it up there come in here with, lay out my little cap so I can see what my color ranges are. Yellow, we'll put yellow in the center. And then orange out. See where I am. I'm really happy with that. And once again, I can come in here with really fun pencil patterns. And a lot of these stencils I sell on my site. So we've got that. Really happy with it. And what I'm going to do with this, well, let me see. Yeah, I like that idea. I'm gonna come in here and go around the border. I'm gonna burnish this off, and create a border outline on this.
And then I'm going to add even more to this. I'm going to introduce, if something stuck on me, I'm going to introduce the little um, marker that we all, I think, absolutely love is these micron markers. And they're really tiny. And they make darling little pinpoint. Um, I mean, this is really, really tiny. And they'll add little subtle changes. And the reason I'm being kind of abstract around this, just random, is because my design is a little, you know, it's not perfectly centered. So when I do random dots out here, it kind of says, you know, I meant for it to be kind of random. It fell where it fell. It's like fabric. So that ought to turn out really sweet. Now, let's go up to these bigger ones. Be, but just before we do that, we're going to do one more with a, with a stamp. And we're going to go in with the wonderful green. And what I'd like to do is mix the chalk with the... Um, with the transparent. So I'm looking at my colors and that's a nice olivey green out here. Yep, like it, like it. And I'm gonna come and just burnish that around the edge of this. Okay, then I've got these pastels over. And if you want to learn more about pastels, watch my video on pastels. But I'm going to bring, um, this is just art, uh, dry pastels versus oil. And I'm just going to bring that in there. Got to be careful because it can kind of gum up with the ink. But I'm burnishing that in and then going to lift off any excess. So that was com combining the two. Now we're going to take this wonderful pattern here and we're just going to take the whole ombre effect and stamp it onto this and bring it over here and just see what happens. We'll see if any variety shows up. It's probably, if it does, it'll be very subtle. But And it was really wet, so look at the glisten on this. I have to sap up a lot. I have to blot a lot up with this. I'm going to do that in steps, and it took a lot up. So I can hardly see my design. So I may have to go back over it. Try it again, because it was just so wet. We'll see, just maybe too wet to take it. So really subtle, but I want to get a lot of that up. So I'm doing it in layers. And then I'm going to wipe that off and see if I'm more successful with using this with the chalk ink and building up layers, subtle layers. So let's come in here with this wonderful blue. And you notice I cleaned my stamp. I'm going to take a little of the juiciness off, bring this over here, see what happens. And I think that's going to be fun. Let's come in here. with some lines, draw our eye out. Get 
There. Fun. Okay. Now, one I haven't done yet is um, using the white ink. So try to get a clean area that you can see. And I'm going to come in with this with um, a halo of figure out a color that I think would work with this. Uh, did we already do gold with pink? We did. This is a transparent ink, pickled pink. Come in here, see how much we have on that. We do, we have quite a bit. We're going to just halo this in the center. And that ought to give it um, nice rosy look and I'm going to change that out I'm going to add the orange one and I'm going to go over here to my ombre and hit both of these turn it around and hit both of these and see that I've got a lot on here and I'm going to burnish this around the edges And I'm coming in here with my to make sure that I get a nice gradation going around there. Burnish it off. Get it all burnished off. It be dry before I do this next step, which I'm going to come in over this with white. And my white, I sell this online with this reinker because the white tends to just kind of dry out really fast. I don't know why. Is that enough in a picture plane? There, that's going to be really fun. I'm going to go get my black um, pencil because I thought I had a black one out and I didn't sharpen it. And I'm going to make sure that I blot because I don't want that white. And that white's going to come out pink. We can see that it's a light pink. Um, but it's opaque and the background is golden and iridescent. And we're doing little dots within dots. So we use the pastels and the colored pencils to add fun accents to things. And I don't have to go all the way out here. I can just leave that kind of centrally located. So the gold is really fun to add transparent inks to and then the white over it. So now let's do, find a clean scrap, pretty clean scrap. So we've got a good one. And now we're going to do a bigger piece. And so with bigger pieces, we have um, more surface to work with. Save that one. And then picking out a stencil that I think will work with this. Right here. Center that. Not sure. I think I'm going to do an over another overall pattern with that. Had we already done... Let me get the the state the oh there it is. So when I want to show how to use this piece, I, I I really like this pattern, but we're gonna do a little a little crisscross with it, and um, we're gonna do it in the blues. Okay. 
So we're gonna start with purple. Sometimes I dab to get it in there and then kind of buff. We're going to see where we are. Very nice, very subtle. Okay. And then I come in there and just make this go in a different direction, but I want to wipe um, my stamp clean. I'm going to come in here with a different direction, and I'm going to come in here with the blue. Make sure I've got that blue. There and this, this is why I like this. It just is very it, to do it as a crosshatch. Like this is just a really nice little simple pattern. Burnish that off, and now I've lost it. There it is. And that's about all that one really needs. It's just fun. So we're going to go next with this really intricate, this opportunity to do this intricate, bigger one. And I'm going to use this piece. And make sure I have it centered. And I'm going to look at my colors, see where I am, what colors haven't I've used quite a variety. I'm going to go back with the pink, transparent pink here. Make sure I have a nice sponge for it. And I'm going to come out here on the outside of this. And this, I believe, is done, yes, it's on the white shrinkets. So it's going to be opaque. We've got that iridescent, go, I mean, the transparent. Double checking. You know, that's why it's nice to hold your hand down on it, because then you can lift up your edges and see where you are with it. Okay, got that going. And then I'm going to come in with these peachier colors. This is the chalk, so we're going to have a total different look. And I'm trying to just keep it isolated to these little um, horse eye shapes, petal shapes. Nice. Okay, taking that off. Lovely just the way it is. But let's see if it needs more. So we're going to come in with this piece. And we'd use this color now. Careful to put this back. I'm going to be concentrating right here. Oops. Now I check, see where I am. Really beautiful. 
and that doesn't need a whole lot. I'm going to burnish that. And I'm going to ask myself, what might this need? Colored pencil. And those are really pretty colors. I gotta be careful at putting my fingers on there and they're dirty and then putting a big smudge on it. So it's really good when you have a package of baby wipes to keep your hands clean when you're working on these guys. So in my next step, I'm going to be shrinking, showing you shrinking some of these down. I'll do some of them on camera so you can see part of the process. And then I will do um, some of them off camera. I would like to do one more piece. This is the shiny, um, I mean, this is sparkle silver with white, and I would like to come in with pastels on that. So I'm coming over here and putting a halo of this right here and leaving it white on the outside. And I would like to come in with um, a stamp. So I'm going to come in with this stamp because it has a, uh, where is it, right here, which one? This motif right here has a central design, and I'm going to do that with the, with the chalk. I'm going to see how strong that is. Okay, coming here, lining it up. And this may be a really subtle look. We'll see what happens. It's going to be very, very subtle. And subtle, you know, since shrink, it says stuff strengthens 50%, you never know how that might show up. I'm going to daub it all up. And I'm going to wipe this clean. Um, I would like to do one more thing with this. And um, I'm going to just ever so subtly come in here. I've, I've got it pretty. I want to make sure it's dry. I'm going to come in here with just a halo. I love that peach on it, but I did want to keep it in the blue, blue families. So, um, that light blue, kind of decide, do I want this transparent or do I want this chalk? And I think I'll stay, I'll go tra transparent. And you know what? The green might be really lovely with this. Let's see, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Really like that. Oops. So I've got a nice collection here and I'm going to be shrinking these down so you can see um, what they look like. I'm going to add just one quick little couple little bonus things to this design process. 
so that you have these options. Be really subtle with it. It's, if, if many of you have taken classes from me, or know that I love the Kryolan glitter shimmers, right? You see me often use these. I'm going to use some of the opals on this, the opal shimmer. And I'm going to do it both two ways. This one has it on the base. That's how I make the opulence. This was white with the silver shimmer on it. But I'm going to use it on this one here because this one here is just really simple design. It needs a bigger template. I'm going to come in here with this one. Take this up very well. And holding my can 12 inches away, just missed it. And we should have something really fun here. It, it has to dry. You don't want to get it oversaturated. And then on this green one, the first one we did, I'm just going to square it once. Okay? And that's just going to be really subtle. So uh, that's it. I'm going to clean things up and we're going to shrink. Show you what the results are when they're all done. So we're going to use the white dome mold. We're going to put our pattern down face down because this is an opaque bead and we want the pattern to show on the surface of the bead. We've got our um, 320 watt heat done and we're heating. And if you're new to this, uh, I do have demos on how to use the molds. So that's in another tutorial. Sometimes a pigmented bead, like a black one, that the trick plastic itself is pretty pigmented, it doesn't totally flatten out. It just stops moving on its own accord, and then it's ready to shrink. You don't want to overheat it. Not always will a bead totally flatten out. You're just looking for it to stop moving on its own accord and to appear to be half its size. So um, let that cool for the count of five seconds which I haven't literally done, but I think it's cool. And that's our adorable um, our, our adorable little bead, which I'll get a close-up of those at the end of this shrinking process. And then next I'm going to do the fluted spacer bead mold with this one. And it works well with six petal beads because it has six flutes. So scallop beads and six fluted six petal beads. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five. Really beautiful so far on this side, and this side is absolutely wonderful too because we put a little, we used a stencil, and so we have hints of glisten on that in the opal look. So um, heck, it's a star bead. Let's put our star bead in it. Star mold, star bead. Star mold works well with five petal beads. And usually when you shrink it, you have to, before you put the top on it and form it, you usually need to realign your bead up. Make sure those little tips are all shrunk down. Stopped moving on its own accord. And I lined it up. Coming down in here, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. This is a little bigger bead, so I'm getting in it a couple of more counts. 
and pulling that out. Oh, adorable. Adorable. Can you see the, the glisten? We sprayed this one. Really nice. So stencils really give you a nice um, uniform uniform look. We're going to do this one in the star mold, and then I'm going to do a bezel mold and, and do some, just do two more, two more. Well, I think I'll do my big one for you too. So I'm going to place that down in there. make sure those are done moving on their own cord. Sometimes the tips, you can see them quickly move in. If you they look a little wonky, just apply the heat enough on to see if they pull in a little bit to make sure that they're totally shrunk down. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. So you will see why these 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 are done with the overall patterns. These are done with um, floral Mandela patterns, and you can see where why you know they're both to me just fun, fun, fun. So let's do our bigger mold, bigger bead, and we're going to do that in the pink bezel mold, and. Um, I'm only going to be able to see most of the design, I think, on one side. So I have to decide whether I want it like this or I'm going to be using this as a face mount. Um, I'm probably going to use it as a face mount. So meaning um, that it won't be a drop, pendant drop. It's going to be mounted and stitching around it on a, a back end. That called flesh mount, face mount, and this was white, and we um, used the chalk stencils with its little leg out there, and uh, transparent. I mean, not stencils, inks. And this is, um, remember I said, this is an opaque bead. We're going to try to get it flattened out. We don't want to overheat. There we go. Stop moving on its own accord. I'm coming in. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. It's bigger. I'm going to give it a couple of more counts. 1,006, 1,007, 1,008. Make sure it's cooled. And this would be a really fun bead to make a, a front uh, 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 a bezel, a front a front mount piece, or you know, layer beads onto it. Colors don't go, but pretty, very nice effect. So let me see if I can do just one more fluted spacer. And then I'll do the rest of these off because this was a really gorgeous little bead. And we want to see it shrink down and see how it happens using the gold shrink plastic and using transparent um, inks on it uh, to give it a cast, a, a tint. Yummy, yummy, yummy. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. So just really gorgeous. It, it's Look at the back side. Wow. It's a beautiful bead. Okay, I'm going to do these the rest of these off camera. So here we are done, and I'm going to come up with close-ups front and backs of what we have. You can see on some of them that you do see through, front and back. Some of them you don't. These are 
it would just be wonderful um, woodland design pieces. Loved how this one turned out. And then the little sweet black one. And then, of course, this one. And so there we are with stencils on shrink plastic and our shrink making shrink it beads. So thanks for joining me.